So hi everyone, thanks for watching. Today I'm with Sean Lomas, known as the legend, professional fighter in multiple disciplines and a martial arts teacher as well. Uh, Sean is a veteran in the true sense of the word of over 300 professional fights in MMA, Thai boxing, kickboxing, lethway, boxing and more. Uh, so Sean, thank you for having a chat with me today, mate. I appreciate you taking the time. All right. Very much. So for everyone watching, just to start off with, um, could you just tell us a little bit about some of the titles you've won that, that you were just telling me about just now? That be all okay. right? Yeah, yeah, I've had a few like um, King of the Ring um, British title in Muay Thai, um, King King of the Ring um, World K1 title, um, Duke Fighting Championships England versus Poland title. Um, I've had a few other ones. Um, what else? Like a freestyle stand up fighting a British title and quite a few more like um, in the past. But yeah. So out of all the fighting styles that you've had, obviously, you know, over 100 uh, MMA fights, you know, kickboxing, Thai box, I mean, there's such a diversity there. In your career, I mean, what have been some of your, your proudest moments um, when you look back on your career? And I'm going to start there because, you know, sometimes when I'm talking to people, I sort of start at the beginning. How did you get into it? But because you've done so much, I, I want to start with a few highlights. In, in your career, I mean, what would you say uh, some of your... Uh, moments that you're most proud of? Um, I'm not sure, like, I've won quite a few, like, hard fights. Like, um, that fight that I had with Tony Moran was probably one of the toughest fights that I've had. And I, I won that one on points. And then um, he, um, yeah, he watched for a rematch for, on a different show, and that was for a title. Um, he was, like, the home fighter. And I was losing on points. And then four seconds to go, I got in with the guillotine joke and got the title there, which was all right as well, so... Yeah, uh, that's a very proud moment. And I mean, obviously, you've had you've had a lot of tough fights um, fighting yeah. across all these different different styles, I can imagine. Is there one that sort of sticks out in your mind as, you know, being one of the toughest fights? Is there, is there any you remember that you think, you know, which ones do you think were some of the toughest fights that you've had? Like quite a lot of tough fights. Like um, I mean, that one was probably one of the toughest sort of physically, but like um, who else did a fight? Mm, uh, like the Lithuanian fights are always tough fights. Like they're always tough fights. Like I've had a couple of them. Yeah, that they're probably more damaging than any other style of fight in the Lithuanian fights. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, that that is something to touch on because obviously you you know you fought across all these styles. What is it like fighting Lithuanian? Because I mean, I know it's it's obviously it's massive in Asia and it's just emerging, sort of getting going in the West now. But I mean, um, I mean, what's it like fighting in 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 a fight as as brutal as that? Um, I, I don't know. I do enjoy like um, the style that it is, but like you do take a lot of impact. If you, I mean, like the shots, like the punches, that like, cause a lot more damage than you would do normally. But the first like, way that I fight that I had, um, you were allowed the headbutts, but the second one that I had, like um, you took the headbutts out of it. But I do prefer it with the headbutts, like. Um, but yeah, I think it's because in the UK they want to change the rules. Yeah. Yeah. Can imagine, but I mean, going into fights, you know, as tough as that. What sort of mentality do you have um, in terms of like mentally? How how did you get nervous or anything, or do you just go in there and just just aim to win? Um, yeah, it's going there, I mean, I don't really get nervous unless I'm taking a fight at the weight class that I shouldn't really be in. If you know what I mean, because I have four like heavy and light, really shouldn't fight like a middle and welter, but like. Um, yeah, if it even fight at the correct weight, I don't really get nervous. So yeah. Okay, fair enough. So let's touch on um, let's touch on the some of the kickboxing. Actually, I'm, in fact, I'm actually going to go back in time a little bit because you you've you've had all this experience. How did you first get into um, martial arts and everything in the first place? I mean, where did it all where did you you know fighting actually start? When I was six years old, my dad told me to like judo. And I started off in judo, and like um, I used to fight tournaments of judo. I used to be like second in Cheshire and stuff like that. When I was like eleven years old, I think it was like I was winning uh, silver there. Northwest was getting bronze and stuff like that, and 
I was only going like once or twice a week, so it wasn't serious. It was just like something I was doing for fun as a kid. And then after that, I started to like um, do karate because I wanted to, because you couldn't really punch and kick people, so I wanted to do that. So then um, I started learning that. And then after that, I'm just different martial arts. I kept like trying different ones until I found MMA. So that's how it started. Yeah. I mean, um, obviously having all these fights, you know, well over 300 and, and, you know, many titles, many tough fights. I mean, what keeps you motivated um, all, all that time to sort of stick at it all that time? You know, the dedication, the training, because there's a lot of dedication that goes into, into yeah. what, what you do. I mean, what keeps you going with that? Well, that's what I enjoy doing. I enjoy training. So if that's all I have to do, well, then that's good. I mean, I, I couldn't like, like do a nine to five that I didn't enjoy. I prefer to like train two or three times a day and just teach people martial arts. And then I'm just doing what I enjoy all the time, nothing else. So I mean, I was a chef for a small amount of time, but then I realized that I could make just as much money fighting and I enjoy fighting. So I just did that instead. Very simple. I like that. I mean, you know, you, you've got to do what you love in, in life. Um, yeah. I've always said that myself, just on, a, just on a personal sort of note. And let's talk about some of the teaching that you, you know, that you do, because I know you do a lot of teaching of uh, kids and adults, isn't it? And everything in Stockport MMA and you, you, you yeah. do all this. Tell me a little bit about um, what sort of teaching you do. gym in Stockport and um, I've got a lot of people come and do like private lessons throughout the day so like um, before the lockdown I was like busy sort of teaching like seven or eight hours a day like um, some more, most of it private lessons and like two or three classes like um, each day like at the night time and sometimes one day class just depends on what day it was so yeah I was quite busy. You've adapted though haven't you I mean because you obviously do, you're doing classes over zoom and yeah, I've been doing a few classes over Zoom. Um, they weren't that busy with classes over Zoom, but um, now I've started doing private lessons on the park, like with social distancing, and more people are better, like that, saying that they're interested in that than they were with the Zoom. I'm not sure the reason why, but it's a similar thing I can teach, but we just seem to think it's better than doing it over the internet. And this is, that touches on another thing, like with the teaching. I mean... Sean, if you had to give advice to people who are just getting into fighting now, so maybe, you'd like, you know, like the young kids are just starting out or whatever, and they're just getting into it. I mean, there's probably a lot of advice you would give, but I mean, what would be some of the main, you know, things that you would say to them? Um, like in for fighting or just... Yeah, fight. just, yeah, getting, well, either or, to be honest. Yeah, if they, if they just, if they got an interest in martial arts, I mean, what, what would you sort of say? Well, if they've got, if, if they want to be like the best fighter they can be, well, the best, they need to put in as much time as they possibly can put in and find like the best trainer, like in their area, somebody that's like him achieved like the best thing, because that's what I always do. I always try and find like the best person in the area and train with them, and then I'm learning the best stuff and then train as often as possibly can. So at the moment, I'm training with Lucio because he's like one world titles in jiu jitsu and there's nobody like it the area that I can get to, if you know what I mean, that's as good. So before that, I travelled all the way to Birmingham to train with Raul Estima because he's like world champion as well. So, yeah, I mean, if you learn off the best people, you can get to be the best as you can be. So, yeah. Okay, I like that. It's a good, it's a good mindset. It's a very good mindset to it. And the other thing is, I mean, obviously with the different styles i mean you you know you fought obviously standing up you fought on the ground you know you you, you obviously mix it up uh, and you've won with submissions and knockouts and a bit of everything i mean do you have like a favorite 
technique? Do you prefer it on the ground? Do you prefer it standing up? Or, or do you just sort of adapt to whatever, you know, whatever comes? Um, well, I'm biased a lot, but like in MMA, most people don't want to stand with me. So that's why I've had to like um, spend, a little, spend a lot of time focusing more on my jiu-jitsu and my wrestling and my sambo, because I do sambo as well. So yeah, I travel down to Congo to train with Georgie for the sambo and he's like one world titles and like that. So yeah. You've, you adapt very well to different styles because in, in your career, you've, you've adapted from one style to, to another. Um, I mean... Do you, you you obviously enjoy the learning then I guess you obviously enjoy yeah, the learning. I do. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. That is. And the other thing to to touch on is, um, you know, what about future plans now? I mean, obviously with with fighting, and I know everything's a bit delayed, isn't it, with the lockdown? But when that's over with, you, you know, what do you see yourself doing over over the next few years in terms of in, like in terms of your fighting career? Um, well, well, as soon as the lockdown's over, um, well, I had a show booked with the Alan Lodge, and um, that couldn't go ahead because of the lockdown. So I'm going to like train my fighters up to put them back on that show as soon as it's legal to do that. And then um, I will look for a fight for myself as soon as possible because I've been training all the way through, so I'll be ready to fight as soon as, um, as, soon as it's, it's le legal to do so because... Yeah, I'm training just as much as... Well, the only thing I can't do now is sort of roll with people or anything like that, or spa, but I can still, like, um, hit, hit punch bag and stuff like that and strength and conditioning, so I can stay fit and then do, like, all the exercises that keep my body mechanics right for the grappling side. It'll just take me about a month or something and I'll be ready for an MMA fight as soon as the lockdown finishes. You're straight back in there. That's, that's Yeah. Cool. I like it, I like it. And one thing, I mean, we, you know, we've touched on like the, you know, the proudest moments of your career. In your career, is there anything, are, you, are there any regrets? Is there anything, anything you would have done differently at all or anything like that? Or is it, or is that not something? Well, it would have been better if it had like sort of, um, like fought a bit less uh, regularly when I was, when I was younger. Cause like I messed my career up a bit by like, and, when I, was, I used to fight three times a weekend. I did like six fights in eight days and stuff like that. If I fought once a month for my record, it'd be totally different to what it is now. And then I'd have a lot more money than I've got now. So, and then I wouldn't have to fight as often during on, on bigger shows, which would be better. But I don't know, you can't go back in time. So, yeah. No, no. I mean, it makes sense. But still, I mean, you know, it's all experience, isn't it? And then it's, it's amazing. It's amazing achievements, everything you've done. Let's touch on, because um, we, we've talked about, what have we talked about? We've talked a little bit about the kickboxing MMA. Let's talk a little bit about the, the you know, the Thai boxing um, side of things. Um, I mean, when I was researching, I, I found some some videos of that and I, I did have a look at some, um, but there wasn't loads and loads of, of written stuff. So so tell us a little bit about like, you know, what you've done in the Thai boxing side of things. Well, Thai boxing, yeah, I started uh, Muay Thai when I was about 20, like, so that's about 20 years ago with Master A. I still train a bit with Master A now, uh, well, just before the lockdown, I was going to his gym. And um, recently I've been doing more Muay Thai because I've been fighting Lithway. And um, I fought in Thailand quite a few times, like, um, and I uh, fought in Cambodia. And um, oh, just I know, flown over to Australia to fight. That was K1, so it's a bit different. I was at a Muay Thai camp in Thailand and he said, do you want to fight in Australia? So I said, yeah, and fought over there. And fought, love, love it there. North Area champion at the time, not the man in the fourth round. So, yeah, that was all right. Amazing. And out of those places, I mean, do you have like a, like a favourite place that you've, that you've fought? Or is there somewhere else? Do you just like them all? Or is there like a favourite? Um, I like training in Thailand, but like... Um, yeah, I mean, it's all right fighting over there, but the money's not very good in Thailand. You're just doing it more for fun when you do it over there. It's like, well, back in the day, I was fighting in Thailand for 50 quid, so like that was, but that was when everything was cheap, so you could survive for a week, like eating like the just Thai street food and stuff like that. But yeah, it's just more for just to sort of stay there for longer and stuff like that. But yeah, I do like Thailand. The gyms are good over there for training. And like um, I've not got a driving license, but they don't care. They let you drive more bikes over there, so I enjoy that. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That is really cool. How long were you there for, Sean? How long? How long were you over there? Oh, well, usually I used to go like for two months, which was like a normal like time. I've been about maybe eight or nine times, but recently because I've got my gym, I only go for like two weeks or something like that. But when I was younger, I could just go for as long as I wanted because I had nothing that I had to come back for. So yeah, so it was back for long. Yeah, that's amazing. That is, yeah, global. Uh, I like it, global. And out of the places you've fought, obviously you've you know you've seen all, all different types of crowds and you've seen you know, everything like that. Um, I mean, what what are some of the best crowds that you know that you fought in front of in terms of like the best atmosphere and stuff? Is, is there anything that comes to mind for that? Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe in the UK, like um, the atmosphere. Like like in the Ritz, like the atmosphere is like sometimes quite good. Like every time I used to drop elbows, I could hear the crowd. Like I could play the crowd like like a musical instrument by dropping elbows on people. It was like yeah, it was all right. But you know, I've not had that anywhere else. Ah, oh, that's cool. And does the crowd affect you at all, though? I mean, does does the crowd sort of you know if you go in and the crowd's more friendly, if they're more hostile or whatever? I mean, does that affect you, or do you just sort of carry on anyway? It it can it, well, it can it can sort of help like in Manchester when it's like uh, when they're reacting to stuff that I do as I do it it sort of make, it makes you buzz and make you do it more if you know what I mean but yeah you know in terms of the training um, I reckon you've probably got some some people in there now that you think could go far in in fighting I mean you, you don't always have to mention any names but I mean have you got um, people in mind that you that you think can sort of go go all the way down to do some of what you've done or I mean how, how's that looking yeah yeah I've got quite a few like um, adults that are quite good but my kids are really good like um, some of them definitely if you keep training um, till they're adults at the same level they are now they could definitely get to like UFC and that sort of level like yeah Some of them are already world champion jiu-jitsu, but like him, when you go to like Muay Thai into clubs, they're smashing kids that are like a lot older and more experienced and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. And the last question I have, Sean, really, that you know, the last thing is obviously everything you've accomplished and things like that. But I mean, personally, I, I would say that you're like an inspiration to people. Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, um, people are, you know, I can imagine look up to you and, and I imagine, you know, they can do some of like what you've done. But what sort of impact do you think you've had, like on your community? Um, I mean, what sort of what sort of impact do you think you've had, like on your on your like sort of local area? And do you think you've inspired people, like with your fighting? And um, well, I've probably inspired a few people because a lot of people that I've I've known like for for a while they come and train and all come and watch me fight and stuff like that, and they enjoy that. Makes them think that maybe well, some of them like were into like say having a drink and that. Now now they come and do that the private lesson with me and start like getting a bit more fit and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, it does a bit. Yeah, definitely, definitely help people. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's, it's got to be it's got to be a good feeling because because I think people need it. I mean, you know, just just in the sense of even if it's just dedication, living healthier, eating healthier. You know, and but you probably you know have things where you, get, you know getting kids off the streets and things as well. I mean, it, you know, it, it's all good work. I mean, it's all it's all very very good work um, that you're doing. I mean, really, champ. I mean, that's everything. So yeah, I mean, like I say, mate, I'm I'm very grateful for you taking the time to have a chat with me today. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel, and there'll be more videos coming soon.